proud moment we had to uh, add those students to the uh, rosters of Oral Roberts University. And uh, Steve, they're going to be fine. Wait. I can hardly wait for those young people to get down to our campus this fall. It's a wonderful thing to see the cooperation between Lassie Broadcasting and Oral Roberts University. And, uh, and it's exciting for those young people because ORU was raised up not only to be a strong academic institution, but also for the power of God. And it's the marriage of that together. It's the, it's the spiritual, it's the academic, and it's the physical fitness all put together, body, mind, and spirit. They're in for a wonderful time, and I'm proud to be involved with Lassie Broadcasting in these scholarships. Amen. Well, we appreciated your cooperation. It's absolutely fantastic. And really, the ORU uh, graduates, they are literally around the world. I mean, you can almost pop up in any country, and you're going to find one. Well, I was riding over here with my good friend uh, Ed Dufresne this morning, and he was saying, you know, ORU sure graduated a beautiful wife for me. <laughs> <laughs> His wife, Nancy, is a graduate of Royal Roberts yeah. University. Hey, wherever, wherever I go, I run into graduates of wow. ORU. I, I ran into them last night here. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, last night before I preached, the executive director of the ORU Alumni Association was here yeah. to make a presentation on ORU. And it just so happened she's born and raised in this, in this area, right, right in the South Bend area. She yeah. attended this church. Yeah before yeah. she moved to Tulsa. Her parents were members of this church until they moved to Tulsa. So uh, wherever I go, I run into ORU graduates, and I thank God for it. Amen. Praise God. You mentioned Ed Dufresne. Ed, good to see you. It's good to be here. Praise good God. How's Southern California coming along? It's wonderful. Hello. You hadn't fallen into the ocean? No, it's not going to, <laughs> as long as me and Fred Price are out there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Ron, Ron Halverson, man. Something yeah, to say about Ron that, too. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But good things are happening. Good things are happening. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hey, you know, you, you've been on both sides of the coin. You've pastored and also been an evangelist. Still are. And uh, is there such a thing as an easier or a tougher situation? Well, if you got the grace for it, then it's easy. When you're greased down with oil, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> then you can do it when God gives you the grace. You know, whether should say all the evangelists, they can just kind of hit and run. You know, and the pastor, he's got to live with everything. The evangelist he, he's comes got to in stay and there. Cuts down all the trees, and then yeah. the pastor's got to pick up the mess. Huh? Oh boy, <laughs> you got to clean it up. Uh, but but you've been the evangelist, and you've been the pastor, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, people are hurting, and uh, sometimes evangelists don't see that hurt. Sometimes they do, but the pastor, he's there. I say, you know, pastor, how come I didn't get healed? Yeah. And what are you going to say to him? You got to love him, heal him. Right. Bless them. You know, Steve, uh, in our circumstance, uh, I'm called as an evangelist, and I travel uh, extensively, but I'm also home a great deal of the time dealing with 4,000 young men and women. Oh, boy. Although I'm not a pastor, in many ways I feel as if I'm a pastor in shepherding uh, the flock of those ORU students and in our regular chapel services and our, our, uh, our Sunday church services on the campus. When you have 4,000 kids, it's hard not to be a pastor. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because you meet with that congregation every week. Every week. <laughs> and, and you know yeah. you face problems, you face difficulties, and, and you have to deal with them with, with situations that they're facing back at home. And, and it's, a, it's a tough deal on them. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, it's a tough deal to, to keep yourself fresh before the Lord, to minister to them, and, and yet do all the other work that the Lord has called that's you to right. do. That's right. You ministered here last night a great sermon that I'm not crazy. I'm just out of my mind. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks might identify with that maybe the wrong way. <laughs> well, <laughs> to tell I, us what you meant. I sort of chose a provocative title for that very reason. Uh, yeah. when, you say to the, when you say to someone in the world, I'm not crazy, I'm, not, I'm just out of my mind, they think, well, it's time for the straitjacket. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, what, what I was referring to, Steve, was the fact that, that uh, there were many things in the Bible that I'm certain people thought were crazy. It's crazy for a leper to dip in the ocean in the in the water seven times and his flesh become clean it's crazy for jesus to spit on the ground and and make mud out of it and put it on a man's eyes and tell him to go to the swimming pool and wash and he would come back seeing but he did it seemed crazy and my point was it was not crazy they were out of their minds and into their spirits and the the point was when when uh, when adam and eve sinned in the garden of eden and satan in the form of the serpent said to them in essence you can be God right they elevated their minds above their spirits mm -hmm. and all through history man has been ruled by his mind but that's not the way God created us he created us to be ruled by our spirit and that our spirit would be in harmony in fellowship in relationship with God and so therefore when when there is a repentance 
we change our mind. It's not just saying, well, I just changed my mind about that. You know, I used to think this, now I'm going to change my mind. No, it is it's more than that. It is literally a change in the position of your mind. It is, once again, making your mind subservient to your spirit. Now, that's not to say that you are a mindless body, that you don't have a thinking process. No, God gave you a mind, and of course, some people don't use it very often. You know, this is a lot of people still under warranty. Uh, but, uh, but we are to use our minds, but we are not to be controlled by our minds. We are to live in our spirit, our spirit man. So therefore, when we repent, we change our mind. We once again elevate our spirit above our mind. And I, in the message last night, I was emphasizing that in, in many of the things that I do as the Lord leads, I am not crazy. Mm -hmm. I am just out of my mind and into my spirit. I've tried it with my mind, and I failed miserably. Yeah. Now I'm trying God's spirit, you see, and it's successful. Praise God. And, yeah. and that is how God has anointed me to help bring Royal Roberts University out of the debt situation mm. that we were in. Uh, you know, I, I assumed a $42 million debt load two and a half years ago, and that oh, debt has now been reduced by half. It's been coming down at the rate of a million dollars a month. Praise God. And, Praise and, God. And, and not through anything that I've done, but through my praise and my worship as I seek God's uh, face and uh, you know I never seek his hand I always seek his face yeah but when you seek his face you get his hand too yeah. a lot of Christians yeah. just seek his hand yeah. right? but we must seek his face yeah. and then you get all of him when you seek his face and I'm learning how to seek first the kingdom of God his authority his righteousness his glory he said if I do that all these things yeah. what else I need what are, what are the things that you need in your life if you begin to seek him mm -hmm. to begin to sow your seed last night yeah. I felt the leading of the Lord at the close of the service to do something for Feed the Hungry. Now, I know that sometime during the camp meeting there'd be an offering for Feed the Hungry, but I might not be here when it happened, and I didn't want to get cheated out of a blessing. Now, at the close of the service, you got up to raise, raise an offering for me. That's right. And I was sitting back here, and the Lord had already put a, a, a seed of amount in my hand to sow in to Feed the Hungry. The Lord said, don't let him receive an offering for you. Instead, you, you give tonight. So I interrupted you there. I interrupted him and said, I don't feel led to receive the offering myself. I want to sow it in to feed the hungry. And you know, Steve, as I've done that, every time that I do that, God multiplies it back to me. God. Good measure, pressed down, yeah. shaken together, running over. He, yeah. he works. Yeah. And to some people it sounds crazy. No, we're not crazy. We're just out of our minds and into our spirits where we belong. Amen. Well, that's the basis Amen. of what I was teaching Amen. last night. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand this, this seed faith thing. And they, they identify that as an American gospel. It, it w might work here in the United States, but, but seed faith, this thing of giving to receive something, re actually expecting a harvest because of something that you put into a ministry, that's not possible. That doesn't work that way. That, that's anti-God, almost the way some of the critics say it. But it has worked around the world. Well, if, if that's true, then those individuals, internationals, uh, should stop planting their gardens. Mm -hmm. They should stop planting potatoes in Russia uh, and in Idaho. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. should stop planting corn and wheat throughout Africa. They should stop planting those beautiful tulips in Holland, where mm -hmm. I just was recently, mm -hmm. because no one plants a seed without expecting a crop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why would a farmer sow seed mm -hmm. except to receive a harvest? And That's that right. is just a foretaste of what God has for us. Yeah. If we can sow a little seed, we have a right to expect God to multiply it back, for God gave his seed, Amen. his only begotten son, so that men would not perish but have everlasting life. He gave for a reason, so that people wouldn't lose their lives, right. but that their lives would be saved. Now, Jesus said, how shall we liken or with what comparison shall we compare the kingdom of God? It is like a little, a little grain of mustard seed, which he said is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. You know, you can hold thousands of mustard seeds in one hand. They're so small. But Jesus said when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all and shoots out great branches. You know, you take a little seed and you dig around in the ground and you put, put it in the ground and cover it over and add some water and sit back and something begins to happen. The first thing that happens is the dirt begins to talk to the seed. The dirt says, hello, seed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm on top of you. Yeah, yeah. I weigh more than you weigh. I'm yeah. bigger than you. You're That's never good. coming up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, isn't that the way the devil talks? Yeah. That's it. You're never yeah. getting out of this mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm on top of you forever. Amen. Yeah. But something about God and that little seed causes the seed begin to say, the life of God is mm. in me. The miracle That's life good. of God That's is good. in me. I have no worries. I have no frets. Yeah. I have the joy of the Lord. Yeah, that's it. 
and, and, and while the dirt begins to have a nervous breakdown, yeah. you know, that little seed is coming up. And you've seen the little tender shoots sure. come up? I've seen it grow through concrete. I've seen grass grow through people's basements. I've seen it grow through highways. Yeah, that's right. you know, nothing is impossible to him that believes, Jesus said. And so we understand that it is the seed that we sow that causes the harvest to come. And if some people choose to disbelieve, it's a free country. That's right. Yeah. And most of the world is free to believe that. You know, just, you know, doubt it and, you know, believe it, receive it, doubt it, do without it. It's your choice. You can decide whether, you're, whether or not you're going to believe what the Word says. I've chosen to believe it. I was telling the people last night, uh, every day by 10 o'clock in the morning, Monday through Friday, in our ministry, we know what the income is of our ministry. We've received the mail, and we've opened the mail, and we know what people have given as a donation to our ministry. So by 10 o'clock in the morning, we know what the income is for that day. And by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, there are tithe checks going to churches, to missions, to ministries, right. things like Feed the Hungry. Yeah. See, the seed we sowed last night, the $5,000 seed yeah. was out of our tithing account. Mm. And so every day by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we are tithing 10% mm. off of every dollar that came into our ministry by 10 o'clock that morning. Mm. And God has begun to turn the tables on the devil. And the debt is already, is already down half, and it's coming down at a rate of a million dollars a month. You see, I know it works. You're too late to tell me it, it, it doesn't work. And by the way, someone who has a peptic ulcer, you're getting healed right now while I'm talking about seed faith. Whoever you are, you need to get up and call the prayer line and let the prayer partner know that your stomach is being healed. You've had burning for six months and God's healing you. How do I know? I know because it's giving me a word of knowledge. You've had a peptic ulcer for six months and God's healing you right now. Whoever you are, get up and call so we can know who you are. Amen. But that's, that's how seed faith works. Yeah. I wouldn't trade seed faith for anything. It's one of the greatest things I've ever learned in my life. Yeah, amen. Now, now Ed, you, you experienced this because uh, you were flat on your back financially, ministry-wise, any way you could be. But through giving, giving of yourself, giving of your time, giving of your finances, God has brought Ed back. Mm -hmm. Back from the dead. Back from the dead. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Now, what was he doing in the ministry right now down in Southern California? What are we doing right now? Yeah. Yeah, well, we just uh, build our local church there. My wife pastors it, mm -hmm. and she's a graduate of ORU, mm -hmm. and she's pastoring that church, doing a wonderful job. We just bought new land, and we're getting ready to build a new building. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ed Dufresne Ministries is expanding. Matter of fact, by the end of the year, we'll be on TV, and we're wonderful. excited about that. Wonderful. Uh, you know, um, when you're hurting, mm -hmm. when something very disappointing happens, depression comes on you, especially in the ministry, and you, 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 you know, you want to go run and hide. Your back's up against the wall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can put on a facade. Well, that wouldn't bother me. Are you kidding me? When everything that seemed like for 20 years just leaves and gone, your airplane, your home, everything leaves, goes. Mm -hmm. And then they're trying to take your church away from yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, I was in a hotel room by myself, Richard. And I said, God, I just want to let my heart stop. I want to go home and be with you. Mm. I cannot take this anymore. And he said, yeah, but a agape love can take it. Mm. And he started showing me how to come out of that and start. I said, Lord, I don't want to go out there tonight and preach. I said, I'm hurting. I'm the one that needs to be ministered to. Mm. He says, you go out there and lay hands on hurting people and your heart will start healing. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got out of that. I just kept giving people that were hurting. I started giving out and ministering to them. And it took about two years for all of it to be completely healed in my life. Mm -hmm. God gave me my ministry, my airplane lap. I had a twin engine airplane that I traveled all over the country. That went, my home went. And then God moved me to Tulsa and mm -hmm. God gave me a brand new home. Jerry Savelle, the Lord spoke to him, give me that twin engine airplane, mm -hmm. and offices and things started going right back, and I started coming right back. And it's, uh, it's just, you know, planting right. seed. Yeah, that's it. You know, not just in money, but if yeah. you need love, give love. Yeah. If you, if, you, if you know somebody else is hurting, you give out and do that. Sure. And it comes back on you. Yeah. And the other thing is, is praying in the Spirit. Amen. That's praying right. and keeping yourself filled up that you're overflowing. You see, that's what Richard was talking about, is being filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And I got so that when everything looked like, I, I remember I was going to court, 
and I was in my bedroom just laughing. I mean, the power of God came over me, and I just started laughing. Yeah. And my staff says, what are you laughing about? I said, I'm just so overfilled with God's love. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Yeah. And I even have a scripture on that. It says here in Psalms 126. <laughs> That's good. It says, when the Lord turned yeah. again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Amen. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and our tongue was singing. And some don't think laughter is scriptural. Oh, it's all yep, through the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Laughter right. has a lot to do with being, when you're filled, when God fills you with the Holy Spirit, then you just start laughing at all the things that are happening, coming against you or anything. Yeah. And it says our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us. Wherefore, we are glad, and I added this, and we're not sad. <laughs> Glory to God. It's easy. The Lord, the Lord has a sense of humor. You yes, know, if you don't believe it, just look in the mirror. I mean, the God, God has a sense of humor. <laughs> Amen. Well, yeah, just look at the other uh, of, of God's kids. <laughs> a real sense of humor. Praise God. You know what? We're going to go to some of the service last night and share that with you. We want to remind you that Brother Richard's going to be ministering here in just a few minutes' time. And so you still have time. If you're watching in the Channel 46 viewing area, you can get in your car and get here. And we're located on Ireland Road across from the Erskine Golf Course. Come and be with us. Then, of course, uh, at noontime, Brother Sumrall's going to be ministering. And then tonight, Brother Rod Parsley's going to be ministering. You can't afford to miss this day. And so we trust that you're going to be right here. So let's go to the service last night as Brother Richard was ministering. Sometimes, most of the time, every time, you've got to get out of your mind and get into your spirit. Great message. Here it is. Lift your hands and begin to give him praise tonight. Somebody's going to get set free tonight. Somebody's going to get set free tonight. I said somebody's going to get set free. Someone will never be the same again. Not because of me, but, but because the Spirit is going to take you right over into your area. And you're going to be changed when you walk out these doors. You will not be the same. Somebody will say to their husband, to their wife, I'll never be the same after tonight. It wasn't because of Richard. It was because of what the Lord did through him. Well, let me get back to my misery. I was preaching this message on the subject, how you can get out of your present mess. When God, in the middle of my sermon, I just hate it when God interrupts my preaching. Right in the middle of my message. God gave me a word of knowledge about a man who'd been deaf in an ear. And so I stopped and I gave the word of knowledge and a man in the back stood up and said, it's me. And he came walking down the aisle and I just went on down the steps uh, toward him. And when I got to him, the Lord, I was going to have, have him give his testimony, the Lord said, just touch him. And so when I did, he began to fall to the ground under the power. I don't know why that happens. I don't understand why some people fall when I touch them. I don't know why some people stand when I touch them. I don't, understand, I don't understand why some people fall to the ground under the power of God and some people don't. I just don't understand that. I've asked God and I've never gotten a reply. I'll look at one and think, well, surely they'll fall and they stand. <laughs> and I look at one and say, well, surely they'll stand and they fall. I have never figured it out. I don't know how a black cow can eat green grass and give white milk and make yellow butter. I just don't know. <laughs> when I touched this man, he began to fall, and there was nobody there to catch him. Now, it takes a long time to fall to the ground. Long enough for your mind to say, insurance problem, insurance problem, <laughs> lawsuit. He's going to hit his head on the chair. You're going to be in court. You won't have to fly to the farthest corner of the earth. You'll be in a lawsuit in Lakeland, Florida. It's amazing how quickly your mind can work from here to there. And so I reached around to try to catch him. I had a microphone in one hand, and I was going to try to hold him in the other. He was a big man, about 6'2", 6 6'3", 2, 6 200 pounds. And when I caught him, I didn't catch him. <laughs> and he threw me over him. And I landed on the floor on the other side of him. And the people began to do just what you're doing. They began to laugh. And it was funny. 
and it kind of broke the tension of my message. Except 20 minutes later, they were still laughing. And they laughed, 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 and I couldn't figure out what in the world was going on. And Pastor Strader had said to me, uh, before I began to preach, Richard, I want to give you a word of warning. We've had a revival here in our church, and no one has been able to preach without, the, without joy coming on their lives. And I said, well, it's fine, Carl. Uh, okay. I was not very impressed. And my wife had said to me before I got on the plane to go to Florida, Richard, when you get to Florida, God is going to turn a corner in your ministry. And then she added, and you do need a corner turn in your ministry. Thank God for you wives. You know, just keep us straight down the... And they just laughed, and they laughed, and they laughed. And I looked over at Pastor Strader, and I said, what is this? He said, this is it. I said, what's it? He said, this. And I didn't understand. And they just laughed, and they laughed, and... And uh, his son, Steve, who's a graduate of ORU, was on the ground pounding the floor, laughing. And tears are streaming down Pastor Strader's face. And uh, I couldn't preach because everybody was laughing. The whole church, two or three thousand, just laughing. I mean, some were falling off, their, off of the pew on the ground. and not. These were holy rollers. <laughs> And my mind was saying, this is crazy. It's crazy. I heard about these kind of people. It's crazy. And I, you know, I've always been so dignified. And out of my belly, right here, where I feel things, something began to move. Now, I prayed in tongues for many years. And whenever I pray in tongues, I feel what I felt rumbling around in my belly then. What does the Bible say? That out of your belly shall flow rivers of what? Living water? Well, let me give you the historical background of that. The historical background is that on, that, on the last great day of the feast, and that's, that's when, that, when that scripture happened, the priests of the temple would come out with large barrels of water. Jewish historians teach that they would take that water in those barrels and they would dump it over and the water would run down the steps of the temple. And the people on that last great day of the feast would rejoice and dance in the water unto the Lord. Rejoicing on that last great day of the feast. And what I believe Jesus was saying as he and his disciples stood there watching this scene of the people rejoicing and dancing unto the Lord in the water. I believe Jesus was saying, you think that water is something. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, he was speaking of the Holy Spirit, which had not yet been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. But when you pray in tongues out of your belly, the Holy Spirit who is in every born-again believer and is making intercession unto the Father seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and when we pray in tongues, we tap into the Holy Spirit's prayer and we pray directly in God's will out of our belly, the Holy Spirit comes. Now, I'm not talking about your stomach. I'm talking about your belly where you feel things. Everybody put your hand right here. Not your, don't put your hand on your stomach. I'm talking about putting your hand on your belly where you feel. When you get happy, where do you feel it? Here. When you get sad, where do you feel it? Here. You see some terrible accident, and you go, oh, oh. Or you get happy, oh. Isn't that right? Everybody act like you're sad. Oh. Isn't that where you feel it? Now get happy. Where do you, oh, where do you feel it? Put your hand where you feel it. Right here. You see, that's your solar plexus area. That's what Jesus was referring to when he said, out of your belly. Not your stomach. Out of your belly. And I began to feel that rolling in me, and the first thing I knew, I began to, I began to laugh. Now, I love a good joke. I enjoy laughter. I hadn't laughed for about nine months. I'd... I was miserable. But something happened. I went beyond laughter. And the more that I laughed, the more I felt the problem, the more I felt the pain, the more I felt 
the anger, the more I felt the bitterness, the more I felt the stress, the more I felt the ulcer come out. And the more I laughed, it just kept coming out and it kept coming out and kept coming out. Well, Brother Richard, it's hard to understand how a healing evangelist can have an ulcer, but they can get them. They can get them. I had one. I certainly yes, had one. Yeah. It's amazing what can go wrong when you owe $42 million. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. God, God's yeah. totally changed it through the Praise joy of God. the Lord. He Praise said God. the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. And Paul said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Well, how can you be strong unless you have joy, mm -hmm. which is your strength? Yeah. And I like what you brought out about the, the rivers of living water. Because I'm sure that most people have read that scripture, as I have, and, and many times, and can quote it wonderfully, but uh, didn't realize the association with the priest uh, flowing out that water and, and the, the ones there dancing in that water yes. with, with joy. Praise God, that's fantastic. Well, that's really what, what I believe Jesus was saying. If you think that water is something, yeah. mm -hmm. that natural water, you wait until the water of the Holy Ghost floods up within your belly, and you begin to get your spirit in tune with the Holy Spirit and you tap into the Spirit's prayer who's praying seven days a week, interceding. He knows the will of God. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We can tap into his prayer. The devil doesn't know what we're saying when we pray in tongues. And God turns the tables on him. And that's what God is doing in our, in our ministry, in Oral Roberts University. He's, God is turning the tables. And I've had such joy, Steve. The pressure is gone. The stress is gone. The ulcer is gone. I'm as happy as I've ever been in my life. I have, well, it's not just happiness, it's joy. You know, you have periods of happiness and sadness in your life, but, but I'm talking about joy. Joy supersedes that. Amen. And uh, the, 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 God is saying to me, if you'll take care of my business, I'll take care of your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. And Amen. it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the scripture says that, you know, you'd look at those little birds, the little birds. And if I can take care of those little things, I can sure take care of there you. There was a pastor here last night that was so totally set free yeah. in the spirit. And so many others who were set free last night. And what God did for me and what God did here at Jubilee 95 last night, he can do in your life. Don't That's make right. any mistake about it. There's no distance in prayer. What, what's God, what God's doing right here at Christian Center, he can do in your life right where you are if you just open your heart up to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. And would you pray for those that, that are sick? And, you know, people... <clears throat> They want to be free, but they don't know how to be free. And they'll, they'll pay any price. They'll go to any doctor. They'll, they'll have loads of medicine all over the house. And they think that's going to get them better. Right. But, but a lot of times, it doesn't. Now, sometimes it does. Now, not, nothing wrong with doctors, nothing Certainly. wrong with medicine. Certainly. But I tell you what, uh, the great physician is the healer. That's right. And every honest doctor will say, shake their heads, I don't know why they got healed, but they did get healed. And I helped. I assisted whatever the body did. They don't know it was God, or they don't want to recognize the fact that it was God. Yeah. So let's pray for those that are expecting right now. And I believe that God's going to touch them. First of all, I want to say that you got to know that it's the will of God for you to be healed. you got to know that God is for you, and he's not the one that made you sick. Particularly, there's a man listening to me right now that you have a real bad liver problem. And I want you to know that God is right there, Jesus is right there to heal you, and it's his will. I know what tradition has said to you. I know that many have said, well, you've done something wrong, that God is doing this to you. God does not make people sick. I don't know where he would get it because there's none in heaven. And he wants to bless you today. And many of you, when you get a good relation, uh, uh, image of God that he loves you and he's for you, I want you to reach out in faith as Steve and Richard and myself get in agreement for you. Father, we thank you and we know that it's your will for every person to be healed. We know that as a fact according to the word. By his stripes we were healed. Past tense. Actually they're not going to get their healing. They already got it 2,000 years ago. And what we have to do is just receive what he has already done for us. So be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is the will of God for you to be healed. In Jesus name. Receive healing where you're at right now. Just say I receive and I believe in my heart right now in Jesus' name. Richard, I think you got something. Mm -hmm. In the authority of the name of Jesus, I pray right now that a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit, complete with the joy, joy that springs eternal, would flood over your being. 
that you would make a decision that you were going to surrender every part of your life. And I'm not just talking about the good parts. I'm talking about all the bad things been going on too. Yes. That you would surrender them all to him and say, God, I lay this burden on you. I remember one time I laid a burden on the Lord and said, now, Lord, it's yours. It's not mine any longer. How does it feel, God? It's your problem now. It's not mine. I surrendered it totally to him. And you know what? He handled the situation. And I got healed through it. I'm praying that God will do that for you as you surrender that situation to him and say, God, I can't carry this any longer, so I'm not going to try. I'm going to lay it in your hands. Just lay it at the feet of Jesus. I'm praying for a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit, complete with his joy, would flood over your yes. being. Yes. That you'd make a decision you're going to be about your father's business, knowing that as you're about his business in your spirit, he will be about your business. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he said, and then all these things will be added. You see, he already knows about the things. Quit talking to him about the things. Instead, talk to him about him yes. in Jesus' name and you'll see a change begin to happen. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Praise God. You know, the Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, right. Right. but all should come to everlasting life. And maybe you've never accepted Jesus into your heart. You've never said, Jesus, come in, change me, make me brand new. And maybe some of you watching, you've been in church all your life, but you're not saved. Maybe you've been there in that pew, faithful as the day is long. You are there because that's your pew. I don't know if you remember or not or are familiar with the churches, but they have churches where a family bought a pew, mm -hmm. and that's their pew. And God forbid that anybody else get in that pew. <laughs> that person's going to get in trouble. That's my pew. That's my, my, my grandparents uh, have, were almost born in that pew. That, that's ours. Well, that doesn't make you saved. That doesn't make you saved at all. That does not make you born again. What makes you born again is you receiving forgiveness of your sins, of you saying, Jesus, I'm tired of the way I've lived my life, and I want you to come into my heart, come into my life, and save me and change me by your mighty power. So you friends watching right now in Honolulu, it's not religion that'll get you saved. And you friends watching in Denver and Tulsa and also down in New Orleans, in Indianapolis, and anywhere else you're watching across this great nation by satellite, it is not religion that will save you. That's right. Religion will kill you. Religion will take the joy. I mean, I mean, it'll just like a vacuum. Just, if you had joy, you won't have it long if you stay in religion. That's the truth. But Jesus will bring the joy back to your life. And we want to pray for you right now. And you pray this prayer also of Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Save me and change me. I repent. That means turn around. I repent from the way I'm living. And I pray that you'll come in. Make me brand new on the inside. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's a simple prayer. You know, someone says, all right, hurry up. Give, give me a prayer. Give me a prayer. We don't have to give you a prayer. All you have to do is just pray from your insides. Say that you're sorry. Ask Jesus to come in. Ask his precious blood that he shed 2,000 years ago for you to wash you, make you clean. And the Bible says that he can do it. All the things that you've tried to do to make yourself clean, you're still not clean. You can change your hair. You can change your clothes. You can change your car. You can change where you live. You can change your job. You can change everything, but you can't change you until Jesus changes you. And Jesus changes you on the inside. So when the inside changes, the outside's going to change. And so many folks, they try to change the outside, but that doesn't change the inside. Let Jesus change you from the inside out today in Jesus' name. I pray that you will. And we have friends available at the telephones right now to help you and talk to you and pray with you 24 hours a day, not just during this program, but around the clock. We have faithful volunteers that are there to help you, talk to you, pray, believe God for what you need most in your life. And we want to agree with you in prayer that you will receive it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, praise God. In just a few minutes' time, we're going to start singing here. We have a host of friends that are here already. And you're welcome to come and, and join us if you're watching in the local Channel 46 viewing area. And we're going to have a great time this morning. Brother Richard is going to preach. Maybe sing. <laughs> Maybe sing. And uh, we're going to have a great time at noon. Brother Summerall is going to be teaching. The Word of God, we're going to have a great time with a special luncheon, plus for the summer all teaching. And then tonight, Brother Rod Parsley, 
Tuesday night, Billy, Show, uh, Billy Joe and Sharon Doherty. Then Wednesday night, Carl Severin. Thursday, Brother Peter Younger from Canada and uh, Brother Phil Pringle from Australia. Then Ulf Ekman on Saturday. And then our last Sunday, Brother Steve Muncy. And we're going to have just a great time every single night, every single day. So come and be a part of it. And remember, we have audio tapes and video tapes available of everything. And so the first package is all the audio tapes. The second is all of the videotapes. The third is everything, kit and caboodle. And so we're going to have just a great time together in the Lord, and you need to get these tapes and play them and replay them and get the joy of the Lord way down deep on the inside of yourself. And don't let go of it in Jesus' name. We'll see you tomorrow. For more information on today's program, write World Harvest, Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, 46624. To pledge your support or to request prayer, call the prayer line at 219-291-1010.